Hello everybody and welcome to the DSLR Workshop, the show that's all about photography and not about gear. I'm your host Steven Zeller, teaching you how to maximize the power of your digital SLR camera. Alright, in last week's episode we talked about Lightroom 3 and how you could use it to organize and edit your photos. Also, uh, how to export your photos and do a couple other cool things and how it integrates with Photoshop. Alright, in this week's episode, continuing on with our theme of editing software, we're going to cover Aperture 3 and talk about how you can do some of those things with that program. Now, again, Aperture 3 is only if you're on a Mac, so if you're a PC user, you may not want to watch the whole episode, but then again, you might. So check it out. Let's head over to the computer and see what we got. Alright, so uh, here we are in Apple's Aperture, and Aperture is going to give us the uh, same type of features that we'd have in Lightroom. We'll be able to import photos, view photos, rate them, and be able to edit down our initial shoot to the images that we want. We can also do develop settings like make exposure corrections, make uh, white balance corrections, adjust brightness and contrast, add sharpening, and even some brush type stuff that you can do in Lightroom as well. All that can be done within Aperture. Now Aperture's interface is very similar to iPhoto if you've ever used that and also another note about Aperture is uh, Aperture is only available on the Mac so if you're a PC user you're kind of out of luck because uh, Aperture is only for uh, an Apple computer so uh, kind of leaves you hanging there a little bit but uh, I wanted to cover it anyway because we got plenty of Mac users that watch the show. Some of the other options that are really nice is uh, you get handy Facebook and Flickr export right inside of Aperture which uh, Adobe has just added with Lightroom 3 and so uh, it's kind of been there for a while with Aperture. Uh, the nice thing is makes it really easy. You can export for email, export for mobile me, which is one of uh, Apple's online backup services. And Aperture kind of organizes things a little bit different. Uh, you've got folders, you've got projects, uh, but there's some other things that are kind of neat to go along with it. You can also train Aperture to recognize faces and so you can uh, f you know search for images in your entire catalog by a particular face which is kind of a handy function and uh, it's also got a very powerful search feature uh, but over here in your panel here you've got library information uh, I've got metadata information about particular images uh, just like uh, Lightroom does in the uh, library module and then also I've got adjustments so I can do adjustments all right here um, all without having to move around a whole lot so Lightroom does make it very handy in that in that aspect or I'm sorry Aperture makes it very handy in that aspect Flickr and Facebook albums are right over here on the left too so I can pull those up and find out what images from my catalog that I've published to my Flickr stream or to my Facebook albums which is also very handy if you're trying to locate something or if uh, you want to upload something very quickly alright so some of the other features available in the uh, view right now I've got the the browser view up which gives me a bunch of small thumbnails of all the uh, different images uh, these are images that I've imported I haven't done anything to them yet uh, they're uh, uh, raw files straight out of my camera uh, I also got the split view which gives me a larger image that I'm selected as well as my thumbnails at the bottom and I can kinda scroll through those just like I would very much the same way in Lightroom I can scroll through and take a look at them and then also you've got the viewer window and the viewer window gives you uh, all your images in a nice big view, uh, nice big screen, so you can go through and look at individuals or images singly. Now the uh, the other thing about it is I've noticed when you go to the viewer window, Aperture seems to be a little bit slower than Lightroom does, at least for me. Um, I'm on a, a a MacBook Pro laptop, so I've got uh, plenty of RAM, plenty of processing power. But you can see still down here, I selected this several seconds ago and it still shows that it's processing. So that's kind of one of the deal breakers for me for Aperture with some of the performance issues. Now with the updates that they came out with, uh, and you can see over here in About Aperture, I'm using the latest version 303. They uh, were supposedly corrected some of that and I will give them that it's better than it has been, but it's still not where it needs to be as far as my opinion and my workflow goes. I like to work a little bit faster than that. Now if I want a really big image, I can also hit my F key and it gives me a full screen image and I can see it full screen. That's one of the huge things that Aperture has over Lightroom is I can go full screen instantly and see a nice big view of my image right on screen. Nothing else, no panels. I don't have to dim the lights. I don't have to do anything. So that is one thing that I am really fond of with Aperture. Okay, and I've also got the loop view which uh, allows me to take my loop here and drag it around 
and I can look at different parts of the image at 100%. I can also scale it to whatever I want to at 50%, 200%, but uh, all I have to do is drag that around and I can look at uh, images without having to actually zoom in. So that's kind of nice. I can turn that off right in there. I can also toggle my full screen right here as well. Now as far as develop settings, uh, I've also got the heads up panel by hitting the H key or the inspector panel and um, I can look at adjustments, metadata, and library much like I can from this window right here. The nice thing about this is say I'm working on an image in full screen, I want to make some adjustments. Okay, Come back into my full screen mode, hit H for my heads up display. I can make those changes like let's say I wanted to adjust exposure a little bit. I grab my slider, start bringing my exposure up. There it is. Okay, bring it up about a stop. All right, now I want to see what it looks like, so I just hit my H key again. And I, I'm looking at my full screen image. Okay, so it's really nice. Again, F on the keyboard, H brings up my heads up display, and I can go ahead and continue to make changes all through here. Now, if you look at your adjustments panel, it's very similar to what you have in Lightroom. I can do raw fine tuning, so I can add boost, sharpening. Um, then I've got my white balance setting. I've also got my exposure, enhanced with contrast, definition, saturation, vibrancy, uh, even going to tent, highlights and shadows, make levels adjustments, and adjust hue, saturation, luminance, and range for each of my different colors. Okay, also in the adjustments panel, I can go over here to my menu where I can reset everything. Um, and then I've also got presets. So quick fixes for like auto enhance, exposure plus one, minus one. Brighten shadows, bold, hold highlights. I can make uh, color changes like cross process, vintage, toy camera punch, intensify, sepia tones, cyanotypes, white balance adjustments, uh, black and white adjustments, basic processing, which is a, a preset that I developed. And I can also save presets and I can edit presets, which is really, really nice. Now, also on my adjustment presets, I've got quick brushes, which allows me to do things like skin smoothing, dodge and burn, polarize, intensify, tint. Contrast, saturation, definition, vibrancy, all that good stuff. Blur, sharp, and halo reduction. Okay, I've also got retouch, red eye correction, spot and patch, straighten, crop, flip, all kinds of cool tools that are right here available to you within adjustments, and they work just like the brush does in Lightroom, or similar, I should say. I won't say just like because they're different products. Okay, so that's what you have for your develop options. Really handy. Again, I'm a big fan of the uh, kind of heads-up display in the full screen mode. Okay, so getting back into the actual uh, portion of Lightroom, uh, in your menus up top, you've got different things for your photos where you can rotate them. You can do all the different stuff you can do in Lightroom. You can create stacks, same thing you can do in, in Lightroom. Uh, you can go in and edit your metadata information. There's several different places where you can access the same information, which is nice because it allows you to kind of tailor how you work in Aperture in accordance to how you prefer to work. Okay, you've also got uh, adjustments down here, like your crop tool. You've got your straighten tool, red eye select tool, brushes, uh, and you've also got some of your rating tools. So it makes it really, really nice. You got your zoom viewer at the bottom, browser viewer, and multi meta and viewer metadata overlays. Show your master, primary only. Aperture is very much like Lightroom in the fact that it doesn't edit destructively. You edit non-destructively. You're never making changes to your original file which is really nice because if you ever do something that you go, gosh, that looks really horrible, you don't have to worry about, you know, I, I edited the pixels in the original file, so now I can't do anything with it because I don't have another copy of it saved anywhere. So the non-destructive editing is really, really handy, and it's one of the things that I also like about Aperture as well as, as Lightroom. Um, so some of the features that you have here are deal breakers for me. Like I said, the performance issue, the lagging that I get. If I was working on a Mac Pro, something that had a lot more processing horsepower uh, and a ton more RAM, it would probably be a little bit better of an experience for me, but it's just kind of a deal breaker for me. Um, and also, I've gotten used to the, the workflow between Aperture or between Lightroom and Photoshop, so Aperture makes it a little bit tougher for me. It slows down my workflow, and I don't really like that. Now, Aperture is very compatible with Photoshop, and you can set that up in the preferences. I can go to Aperture menu and then preferences. Um, and uh, you get different things here in your preferences, like you can change the appearance of how things look. You can change your import settings for default imports. Like let's say you connect the camera, it'll bring up uh, it'll bring up 
aperture right away and start importing images. You can select your external photo editor, which uh, you can see I had Adobe Photoshop CS4 selected. Uh, external video editor and that's one thing note that Aperture also allows you to edit video one of the things that it has over Lightroom and with today's DSLRs having uh, video capability it's really an important feature for a lot of people who are shooting both stills and video because they can import all their files into one program and make all their edits there and not have to go someplace else again a nice feature to have um, something that I would like to be able to use but I get hung up on those performance issues. So it's available to you and I want you to know that so that if you do choose to go with Aperture and you like using the uh, video and stills, you'll be able to do it all in one program. And like I said, Lightroom doesn't do it yet. Uh, you can view videos in the library module, but you can't make edits. You can't do anything else in the develop module to edit those videos themselves. All right. You can also make changes to labels. Uh, you can set different labels for different colors. You can adjust your previews. I don't have mobile me, so it doesn't allow me to connect to the web. Then I've got an advanced tab for a hot area threshold, cold area threshold, adjust your black and white clips, uh, clipping overlays and color automatically, and that's for like your histogram type data. Okay, so that's in your preferences. All right, all in all, Aperture is a very great program. There's a lot of working pros that use it. Uh, a lot of a lot of big names like uh, Vincent LaFerre, uh, Chase Jarvis, Joe McNally, they all edit in Aperture. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it for for the general use. It's just it's not the program that I chose to go with. I'm, I'm a big fan of Lightroom, but wanted to show you some of the options out there. And uh, we'll take a look at a couple other options available in uh, upcoming episodes. All right, so uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, appreciate you checking out Aperture 3 right here at the DSLR Workshop. All right, well, thanks for uh, checking out our episode on Aperture 3 and how you can use that to uh, organize, edit, and take care of your photos and keep them all organized, ready to rock and roll. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to uh, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the DSLR Workshop. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the DSLR Workshop. And check out our website, www.thedslrworkshop.com. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care.